Numerical Computation, Chapter 2, MATLAB Video Number 2. We now take a look at arrow with the interpolating polynomial, where the number of interpolating points increases. Here is a plot for the arrow, where we chose um, more and more points to interpolate. So the arrow is plotted in a logarithm scale, so you can see the magnitude of each arrow. So, say the blue one was about 10 to the negative 3, and the red one will be 10 to the negative 6, and so on. The blue graph corresponds to the arrow where um, you have three intervals and four points, so it's n equal to 3. And we see the arrow is about 10 to the negative 3. What we did next was that we um, choose a midpoint right in the middle of each interval. Note that this is a still uniform um, distribution of um, your points. So by doing that, now we have um, six intervals and seven points, and then we compute the interpolation polynomial again and find its arrow. And we see now it reduces to 10 to the negative 6. And if we repeat the procedure one more time, that is, cut these into half, so we have actually um, 12 intervals and put in a polynomial of degree 12. And this is the arrow we get, this green line. And we see in the middle it's really, really small. And around the edge, I would say it's about 10 to the negative 14, something like that. So from this three um, simulation, one might um, conclude or be tempted to conclude that it seems to me arrow is decreasing as the interval length becomes smaller. So is it really so? Let's wait a bit before we conclude and continue the process a couple more times and see what happens. So here's the graph of more simulations. So remember the green one we had from last plot? So what we did was we have the interval length and we plotted the arrow for the, the next level. So which will be, oh, I lost count, one, two, three, um, four, four times three, twelve. So that will be like 24 and equals to 24. And then we see something strange happens. That is, the arrow now, instead of going down as we were expecting, it actually rises up, especially near the two end points. Okay, so you might say, well, that might be just one unstable uh, phenomenon. So let's half the interval length one more time and double the nodes. So we plot the arrow in this cyan color. It actually gets worse. And look at the arrow here at the end point x equals to 1. It's almost the same as where we used only n equals to 3 with 4 points. So this is kind of a counterexample that shows that if you just increase the number of interpolating points, that is, making the interval length smaller and smaller, and there is no convergence for the interpolation polynomial. So in the end, in the limit, one cannot say the interpolating polynomial eventually converges towards the function that it's interpolating. Okay, so let's look at another phenomenon that is with uniform grid. So we talked about uniform grid. So let's set um, n equals to 4 and uh, approximate a cosine function from the interval negative 1 to 1 with uh, five, ev 5 evenly distributed points. Okay, And then so you see and the green one is the function and the red one is your polynomial. So we can plot the arrow as well, that is exactly the distance between these two functions, which is plotted below. And we see that um, kind of in the middle, the arrow is a bit smaller. Of course, at the interpolation point, the arrow is zero. Okay, And we see it's somewhat bigger. It peaks a bit near the boundary, and also it peaks a bit here near the boundary. 
Let's double the number n. So we are using nine evenly distributed points. Okay, so we plot um, f together with p, and we can't really see the distance with our eyes. So if we choose to plot the arrow, and then you can see, so the arrow is of the magnitude 10 to the negative 3, so it's much smaller, and we also see that in the middle of the interval, the arrow is actually even smaller, so it's very close to 0, and the largest arrow occurs right at the two endpoints, right here near negative 1 and right here near 1. So this is kind of annoying because in the end, the arrow is dominated by these two intervals, right? And those very, very small arrow, well, they are small, but the max arrow occurs here. Okay, now let's continue the process one more time and double the n to 16. And then we see that um, now we have 17 points. And again, plotting the functions together, f and pn, I can't see the difference, but I can plot the arrow. I see it's small, it's of magnitude 10 to the negative 9, but the arrow is kind of a concentrated at the two end points, near negative 1 and 1. And in between, it's actually much smaller than 10 to the negative 9. So I feel like that a lot of effort is wasted here, and by fitting in 16 points, I probably was hoping to get some arrow better than 10 to the negative 9, something pretty close to um, what the arrow would be in the middle of the interval. But on the contrary, I have a rather big arrow, but they are concentrated at the boundary. So maybe something can be done to improve this phenomenon. So one can choose the interpolating points in a smarter way to kind of a um, uniformly distribute the arrow in an optimal sense, and these are called Chebyshev nodes, and which we'll be talking about in the next video.